You have, you have to choose between being attracted to a piece that may maintain its value <laughs> versus being attracted to a piece that's going to have, never going to have a secondary market and, and not have value. I mean, it's nice to be attracted to the piece that's going to maintain its value. Um, I don't know that would keep me from buying something that, that just spoke to me, right. you know, and, and I loved, you know, that and I'd still, I'd still buy it, but that sometimes, you know, there is sort of a choice, you know, you, you know looking at, you know, different books and saying, well, this, I mean, I like them both, but this is a, this is a work that's going to, that has, that has that's going to maintain some value and down the road, you know, you may want to. So, so we might be influenced by other factors. Absolutely. To some extent. But, uh, but I bet I bet none of us collect because we think that uh, whatever we purchase is going to be worth more tomorrow. Usually when I buy something I think it's it's maybe as a commercial product it's worth maybe half what I paid for it. Every time. And even if I make a good deal, it's it's still worth less I think than I pay for it. So there are other factors like, is this a great one by a great artist, mm -hmm. or is this a, or is the is it an early version or a later version of that print, or is the or but mostly, it's oh, yeah. yeah yeah so <laughs> it's such a beautiful oh my god beautiful thing which I which I so appreciate uh, and and so for the most part I'm just. Take over that. Look at it. I, I, I look at my collection regularly, and I shiver. So, so a nice, question right? that I, I thought might that really takes me to a question I didn't know whether I would ask or not, and that is when you look at the pieces that you buy, what does what does it do to you? Let's move a little more. Estimate. Shiver. They sing. <laughs> yeah, so the, good stuff, the good stuff. The good stuff sings. The good. The good. And. and and I think maybe what sings for me mostly probably sings for for most other people, but not not in every case. I mean, we're all different, so we have we, you know the the coolest thing for me might not be the coolest thing for you or for someone else, but for but and they're different too. Like I thank God, our <laughs> noble color print that's from the late 1700s. That's, that a it's it's in great condition, which is unusual for a color print because they were hung up and got ripped and dirty, so it's pretty it's pristine. And so that, I didn't appreciate that as much when I bought it. What I appreciated is this image of a young girl, maybe a, a, in her early or mid-teens, who's a courtesan. She's, a, she's a, a girl for hire for life. And she's standing on the Ngawa outside this uh, buildings, the, the, a walkway to keep your feet from getting in the mud underneath the eave. And behind her, uh, up at the top of the print, through you can see through this shoji, the shadows of musicians playing. And you, and you and she's looking down as a sort of one of those zen hand washing things with a, with a ladle in it. And she's, she, you can feel the, the, uh, that melancholy of the moment and her life, and and even though there was a raucous party in the background, and she might be a little tipsy too, and it all, I mean, really. <laughs> uh, so, and it's not just that one. I mean, it's pretty much every one. There, they, but not because it's a melancholy teenage girl with music in the background, but could be a ferocious warrior or a, or a, a landscape or. A, the printing techniques, and there's so much to appreciate. Really.